Uh, thanks for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I'm Hiroshi Furukawa, head of Innovation Center. Today, I've invited uh, Pietro and Teresa, uh, or who are the less representative of each uh, regional innovation center. And before entering to their interesting uh, uh, introduction, uh, let me briefly introduce our overview of innovation center. We, as NTT Data, uh, announced new MMP uh, last year in April, aiming at to realizing a sustainable, sustainable future uh, for the global uh, third stage. And in, in this midterm plan, uh, uh, Five pillars are uh, uh, announced, and our innovation center is responsible for strategy four, enhance advanced and development technology. And our innovation center's main uh, goal would be a, to acquire advanced technology uh, from um, from the globe uh, global market, and also to uh, do our joint R and D with innovative customer. To do that, we established uh, six countries uh, innovation center in globe uh, to accelerate this uh, activity. And our uh, innovation center uh, in a global scale uh, tried to standardize uh, innovation process as much as possible. Firstly, uh, of course, we have to um, validate the maturity of new cutting edge technology. We called it technology validation. And once we confirm the maturity level of technology, then we, we will evaluate if this technology uh, can bring the business value toward the customer use case, which we call uh, business validation. So the point here is, of course, uh, each region has uh, own characteristic, but the important thing is try to maximize the uh, efficiency uh, of uh, process uh, by standardizing this uh, kind of uh, input and output flow. And that, that's an overview of our innovation center activity and I will give the floor to Pietro for their European activity. Thanks, Rossi san for this introduction. And uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Piero Scarpino, and uh, I'm the head of the EMEA Innovation Center. Uh, that uh, is one of the five innovation centers that was established this year. Uh, the focus of the EMEA Innovation Center uh, is on the industrial metaverse and the quantum computing. Uh, there will be a separate session for quantum computing, so I will focus on the Innovation Center for the, uh, for the strategy, and, uh, and I will try to give you some flavor about the activities around the uh, industrial metaverse. Our strategy leans on three pillars. Uh, we uh, try to work uh, on the emerging technology as a way to transform the way in which customers look at us. We can use the technology to change the way in which we are seen by our customer. 
uh, we try to use the emerging technology to specialize our offering using uh, the leading gauge technology. And we would like to use the innovation center as a glue, a place where connect all the different pieces of the company and guide innovation toward the execution together with the global sectors. Let's go through the transform pillar. Uh, what the analysts told us in the past year was that we should be more proactive to propose the edge technology solution. And they also told us, uh, talking about the sustainability, for example, that we have a credible story. We have many credible stories, but now uh, we need to make it compelling. So we would like to use innovation as a mean for rebranding uh, using a human centric approach and uh, also make a really pragmatic innovation that is really connected to the business. Go through the specialized and group pillars. Uh, this is another comment by, made by the analysts in the past years. Uh, they say that we should have a more industry specific knowledge and it could have helped us to develop a better tailored solution. So we should specialize what we are proposing to the customer, specialized for the industry, specialized for each specific customer. And because the technology is evolving really fast and talking about emerging technology is not easy, also for the customer. So we need to create some specific competence that can help to uh, create uh, use cases around the emerging technology, but make them transparent to the customer. So the customer should only think about the benefit that they can have from the technology, but we should deal with the technology. We should create knowledge around this new technology, specializing the way in which we deal with the technology themselves. And uh, the way to do this, this is stay together with the customer, creating joint lab with the customer. And uh, in order to do that, we have to connect all the pieces of the company. We don't want that innovation center is a silos that stay uh, uh, in a standalone way, disconnected from the company. So uh, what we did, we did a lot of workshop with the sectors. This is uh, really strategic for us, working connected with the people from the business and having a place where all the people can stay together designing and understanding how the technology can change the way in which we want to business. Uh, another important point is that we really believe that all the innovation center should work connected each other in a really global way. And uh, this is the stage, not only for our technology, but this is the right place where we can connect also with the startups and the other uh, uh, research center and uh, the other pieces of the company. And uh, of course, this is the place where we can host events together with the customer and show what we are able to do. Uh, I believe that uh, through the Innovation Center, we can glue, put together everything, all our competence and spark creating new business. So emerging business development is one of the uh, uh, things that we want to achieve. Uh, and we can do this through a showroom that is the place where we bring customer and where we bring all the different components and stakeholder of the company. And this is also the place where we can start to develop new assets. And to, these three things are the things that can help us to create, create the next. Uh, how we can create that and deliver the next? Of course, we are uh, uh, trying to leverage these four pillars. One, as I told you, is the technology advisory. Uh, we believe that uh, the hyper-specialized tech advisory can help us to put the most innovative solution in place, making a clear business impact. We need the innovation space. Uh, this is the place where we understand the customer needs, when we can showcase our capabilities, and when we can integrate the value proposition of our company. Uh, and of course, we have to change the approach. What we want to really do is to use a really pragmatic approach uh, to prevent offering the innovation theater. We don't want to show just the technology itself, but we want to 
use the technology to have a real impact of the business of the customer and avoiding to create some silos in the company. And to do that, we need to involve the sectors. This is what we say. So it's crucial to involve the sectors from the beginning, establishing a trustworthy relationship with them. In order to do that, we need to create the trust and the awareness that the innovation uh, center is the place that can be used to meet the customer, to reach the customer, and to propose not only the emerging technology that can be the entry point, but starting from the emerging technology, then propose all our value proposition and push all our business uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way. I want to go only through the space because uh, this is a, an image taken by our innovation center and uh, is the showcase for our capabilities. Uh, and we wanted to do in a really innovative way. There is a lot of technology, but we say that this technology should be transparent. The customer should not focus on the technology itself, but should understand how this technology can be used to help their business and help them to solve troubles and problems. So we generated the new concept of a showroom that can display in a really easy way the leading edge technology to everybody. So not only to the uh, customers, but also to our colleagues, to other stakeholders. And we did this in a physical space using digital device. And we say that this is the place where we want to disintermediate the technology complexity to boost the business readiness for our clients. And we also put in place some instruments to connect the different showrooms, each other, and the different places, each other. The image that you can see on the corner, uh, bottom on the right, uh, you can see that there are two innovation centers connected using a magic mirror. So people from one innovation center can do presentation uh, for customers that are in another innovation center. So this is the way to connect all the different pieces uh, together. Uh, in the first nine months of activities, we did more than 90 events. The target audience was uh, the executive levels of the company. Uh, we saw that all the executives want to understand how they can change the business using the emerging technology, the leading edge technologies. They already are aware how to use the uh, mainstream and the technology that they already be placed, but they want to understand how the new technology can help them for the future. So thanks to this, we were able to bring a lot of executive of the customer in our place. More than 83% uh, of the events had follow-ups with the clients. And uh, uh, also the uh, average duration uh, was very long. Uh, I will share with you some numbers and details later. Uh, this is the place where, as I told you, we met uh, uh, not only the customer, but we really meet also uh, our colleagues from the sector, from the business, because they have to understand and we have to work together in uh, uh, exploring the technology and uh, creating use cases that are really, really specialized uh, uh, for uh, their customers. So, we don't know a lot about the uh, customer's needs. So this is why we need to work together with the sectors in order to create a new solution. And this is the place where we also have to bring the startups and the university to create and co-create together something that uh, maybe doesn't not exist. Uh, let's go through some numbers. As I told you in the first nine months, we did more than 90 meetings. Uh, we invited more than 200 people and we generated more than 30 opportunities with the customers. More than 10 countries were involved. Uh, and uh, as you can see, all the sectors were involved in this kind of a meeting and almost all the meetings were conducted across country, involving people not only from uh, Italy, Germany, Spain, but also we started the collaboration uh, with the US, with Japan, with India, with China, uh, try to create a really global uh, connection among all the different pieces. And uh, uh, thanks to this, we were able to connect also and starting a collaboration also with the other parts of the company that in this moment are, are still not part of uh, the entity data family. 
And uh, we also try to push using a partnership approach, not only with the tech companies, but also with the customers and with uh, the account academy and the research center. About the tech companies, uh, uh, we uh, created a, a strong uh, uh, partnership with NVIDIA uh, because NVIDIA is a strategic partner for the uh, digital twin and the industrial metaverse. And uh, now we are accumulating knowledge and certification about this uh, on this solution. And uh, we are together with them specializing our offering. And uh, we are uh, creating a, a, a joint go to market uh, proposition. And thanks to them, we already started some activities with the customers. And uh, we have uh, seven activities already in the pipeline using the NVIDIA and uh, working together with them. And, uh, but I think the most important achievement is the joint lab and the partnership that we did with an important media company that uh, uh, is a, a actually a global company. And uh, we started to work with them uh, through a POC that we did together with them, starting in the Innovation Center, but then uh, other activities started. What we are doing, what we are doing together with them is uh, we created the observatory. We are doing scouting and evaluation of technology. Uh, we are doing technological assessment and uh, we are developing proof of concept. And, uh, and then when uh, uh, a proof of concept uh, is done, then we can start the activity. Uh, with them, after the POC, we have uh, six projects already started. And the same uh, is uh, with the Academy and the Research Center. We have uh, three collaborations that are going to start soon and are really specific, not only with technology company, but also with company that they have a humanistic approach because this is what, what we need. These are some of the activities that are around the industrial metaverse. I don't want to go through all of them, but uh, as you can see, uh, we are working from the public sector to the media sector to yeah, energy and utilities and uh, manufacturing and telco. Uh, what we are doing basically is uh, uh, an activity for the industrial metaverse around the concept of the digital twin, creating a virtual replica of something that uh, uh, is uh, physical and then uh, work in the virtual replica in order to uh, 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 enable uh, different use cases. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I will go through one an example in, uh, in one minute. Uh, what we saw is that through the innovation center and the joint lab with the customer, we created like a domino effect. Uh, because we started from the innovation center, we created a joint lab with a customer, we did a partnership with the customer, and then we did a partnership with NVIDIA, in the case of the digital twin, we integrated the activity uh, uh, with the bids for tech uh, uh, um, projects that, uh, uh, that, that we did. And thanks to this, we started a new business stream on the sustainability. So this is what happens when we do activity around in the, in the innovation center. Uh, this is just uh, an example of the POC that we did with the media uh, customer. Uh, their need was, uh, they wanted to create a, a complete and synchronized virtual replica uh, of their data center that was connected uh, 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 to the, uh, uh, to the data from, from the device inside the data center. And they wanted also to have a, a system to monitor and visualize alarms and simulate uh, its physical behavior. So we used the NVIDIA Omniverse platform uh, plus other tool. And uh, then at the end, we created this uh, 3D virtual replica uh, with a really high precision and a really high level of detail. And uh, then we can control and simulate everything that happens in the data center uh, in a bi-directional way. Uh, these are just some screenshots, but uh, the environment is fully walkable. Uh, we can uh, visualize all the details of the component and we can interact with all em the elements in, this, in, the, in the scene. And then we can reach a level of detail down to the line card of, uh, of the machine. So, uh, 
what what I want to I want to leave you with a message that uh, the innovation center for me is the key for boosting a, a really global collaboration in uh, entity data. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, now I leave the stage to uh, Teresa from uh, the innovation center in North America. Hello, I'm Theresa Kushner and the head of the North American Innovation Center. We'd like to take you today through some of the things that we've been doing in North America, because we're part of this incredible information center uh, capability that NTT Data has built. And we're gathering innovation talents from around the world to look at how we can unleash the potential of cutting edge technologies. And we look at those technologies, not for what they will be bringing to us in the next two to three years, but what they will be contributing in the next five to 10 years. We identify those technologies early. We co-create with them, with our customers, to make sure that they will actually solve problems that our customers have or anticipating that they will have. And in addition to that, as part of our mission, we want to strengthen our relationships with startups and research institutes worldwide. One of the things that we have in North America is a strong relationship with the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the Media Lab at MIT. And that particular capability is adding a lot of strength to our technologies. To begin with, we don't have just an information innovation center in North America. We have an innovation program that consists of a couple of capabilities. One is briefing centers. Briefing centers are the places where our customers come when they want to find out about us or our prospects come where they want to make sure that we're the right company to deal with. That those briefing centers act as sort of a funnel for things like the innovation studio and in the innovation studios, what we do is incredible work to determine what our customers really need and want as far as their technologies and the problems they're trying to solve. The innovation studios are places where they can go and work with others in their organization to determine what the challenges really are and bring we bring them together to make sure they can do that. Then the innovation center, which is what we manage and it's brand new to this particular program, the innovation center looks at technology and how the technologies can help them solve the problems that they have identified. Ultimately, when we have looked at the technologies and we've created proof of concepts or minimal viable products, we then can turn them over to delivery centers or competency centers that will allow them to develop these products and make sure that they can be uh, hardened into their environment and deliver what the promise that was when we created it in the innovation studio. We have a very simple model. <clears throat> However, it, it, it sort of takes, it is a, it's a place that comes together at the innovation centers and the innovation center program. With the studios, we are always client driven. The client drives the, the activity inside the innovation studio. What are their problems? What do they need to have solved today? What is it that they are really going to be concentrating on in the future? Technology driven is what the innovation center is. So while they're thinking of all of their problems, what we're thinking of are all the technologies that could be used to solve those problems. And when we combine the innovation studio and the innovation center, we get the very best for our customers. Adding to that, the university and the startup collaboration allows them to expand their own capability for research and development well beyond what they might have in their own organizations. Ultimately, everything moves to a competency center so that we can scale this capability. That's what we're looking forward to with the innovation centers of tomorrow. 
The Innovation Studio objectives, as I mentioned, are to take it from the client's point of view. And we're very proud of this studio simply because it allows us to take our clients away from their day-to-day -day workspaces and immerse them in content and capabilities that are relevant to their engagements and objectives. We solve for their near-term challenges in the Innovation Studio, but occasionally what we need to do is apply technology of tomorrow to what their challenges are today. So we roll up our sleeves and we work with them and we answer the questions that are unknown. Sometimes we might develop products, minimal viable products on paper that would have them solve some of the problems that they have. This is a place for them to work and the innovation studio immerses a customer in what it's like in, in their particular environment. You walk into a city where there is retail and hospitality and hospitals and all kinds of different areas where you can actually see the technologies that we have, been, that we have deployed with our customers. The Innovation Center objectives are slightly different in that we take it from a technology perspective. And we have to target the right technology from comprehensive research and evaluation. And that begins with a lot of our work in Japan that has looked at the radar of all of the different technologies and where they are on their maturity level. We use that maturity level to decide which of those technologies by geo will be most appropriate for our organizations. And then what we do is that we gather hands-on knowledge about those areas so that we can become thought leaders that can be depended on, not just for that particular technology, but to represent both our geo and the other innovation centers. We transform technical value into business value for our customers long-term. That is the objective of what we want to do. And interestingly enough, what we have learned to do too is to collaborate across the world with people like Pietro in the Emil uh, Innovation Center and with the Japanese Innovation Center, with India and with all of, with China to bring the best of technology to our customers. Because each of these Innovation Center managers are attempting to look at technology in their space and see how it applies in a different way. We want to make sure that we have global long-term and medium-term uh, technology strategy, that it's not something so far out there that we can't reach it within the next five to 10 years, but it is something that we may have to spend a lot of time and research on. So we in the Innovation Center dedicate some time to actually developing research and evaluations of the technologies that come through. And then ultimately what we're trying to do is co-create in an R&D kind of environment with our customers, our innovative customers. Those customers that would like to have additional arms and legs to think about what they are putting into their environment and what kinds of technologies will be most effective for them. Now, we undergo in the Innovation Center three things. We do technical evaluations, we do some proof of concepts, and what I'm going to talk about a little bit here is exactly what's contained in each of these technology evaluations. We focus on a technology area. Every I see every innovation center has themes that they pick that they will become sort of the hub for. In North America, our two themes are digital humans and smart spaces. And from a digital human perspective, what we've tried to do is to decompose all the parts of what makes up a digital human. The avatar creation, the voice cloning, the visualization platform that they exist on, all of those things we have, um, we have developed capabilities and technical evaluations of all of the tools that make up facial expressions or color change. What kinds of tools are we using? So that when our customers come to us, there is someone in the organization who understands how to put together 
an avatar for or a digital human in an environment and they understand how to make it work for that customer. In addition to that, they understand which is the best value for that customer because we evaluate not only whether these technologies will create what we want it to, but how expensive they are or how, how difficult they are to maintain. So we look at all the aspects, technical aspects of each of these areas. In smart spaces, we do the same thing. We have a couple of platforms, Plan Twin and CityScope, that have been developed within the NTT organization that we try and utilize in situations where we might want to evaluate how to create a smart space. And a smart space could be anything from um, a platform on a transportation uh, hub, a, a city, a portion of a city where you want to see exactly how that space can be managed best an area of a hospital that might be the place where everyone comes together for eat for emergencies or uh, other kinds of areas within the hospital. Those smart spaces, we learned, we learned how to simulate capability within those spaces by using sensors, but also by using capabilities that bring those smart spaces together. One of the things we're looking at in North America is how to combine digital humans within those smart spaces. So that even as we look at metaverse going forward, if the metaverse comes into a smart space and encounters an avatar that we have put there in order to help guide them, there is a way to interact in that virtual space. So we do technology evaluations. We also do proposals and POCs. Part of what we wanted to do with the Innovation Center was be proactive in our innovation. So we do a lot of proposals that are based on some of the research and development efforts that we have. And we like to make sure that we've done, we're doing things that are above and beyond what the customer might have requested. So we have some value propositions, for example, in inventory control that we have put together uh, with some of our fast retailing. The virtual visual studio also has this capability called try it on visually uh, or virtually so that you could try on clothing in a virtual environment. But our proposals don't have to be things that we are really uh, acquainted with that can be things that we think the customer might be interested in. For example, we have done some proposals for RFID experimentation and for smart box design for managing instruments in a particular uh, hospital environment. So there are a lot of ways that we propose to the customer. The value proposition from our ICs is that we want to continue with the latest and greatest technologies. One of the things that we are looking at right now are proof of concepts in the virtual streaming, video streaming area, as well as in quantum computing, trying to figure out where quantum computing is best applied. So we have proposed all kinds of capabilities to our customers because we're trying to get out in front of what they might require. An example here is a digital human, uh, is a digital human use case. There are many, many ways to deploy a digital human. And usually you deploy them because you have something that you want to save. And that is the expertise of your humans. Because a lot of times we don't have people to manage the counters at our retail stores or to manage the call centers. We need to have additional resources. And in doing so, we can create digital humans that can actually fulfill on that goal. We have interactive use cases where you actually can interact with the digital human, or we have standalone use cases, like we said before, which are the try, the try visualization, where you actually create clothing for yourself and can try that on. So the technologies and the use cases for digital humans are great, what we're trying to do now is make sure that our customers understand we have this capability. For smart spaces, we're doing exactly the same thing. 
a space, remember, doesn't have to be a big space. It could be a room in your house, an office, a shop, a factory, a city. It could be a whole bunch of spaces. But we need it's we need to be able to understand what can happen in that space. Not only how it is managed, but how could we simulate things in that space? For example, one of the things we've done with smart cities is at an international airport, we were having difficult difficulty managing in airport traffic, public transportation, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we used our smart city platform to see how we could minimize people at certain stops in that transportation hub. You know, so that we didn't put a whole lot of people in the same place at the same time. So we're using this to optimize our experiences with with uh, ourselves and with digital humans and with everything. And we're also using it to ensure that uh, we get our customers the very latest and greatest cutting edge to apply to their problems. So thank you very much for your time. I think that the smart cities, the smart spaces, uh, smart capabilities that we have at NTT Data will only make us in the future the trusted global innovator that we are.